Greetings, everybody. It is an absolutely beautiful weekend here in the Ozarks. And of course, we are enjoying tournament golf right here in Branson, Missouri and in Ridgedale. This is the second of two tournaments and we are on site live at Ozarks National. Of course, welcoming players with the tournament beginning on Monday, we've got a lot of great coverage that's coming your way, including some interviews with some of the best golfers in the game, including this one that's coming up right now. It's our interview with Davis Love III. Hey Davis, well welcome to the Charles Schwab Series here at Ozarks National and just your thoughts on the course you had a chance to play today. Oh, the course is fabulous. One of the main reasons I came uh, was because I love Ben Crenshaw golf courses and I knew um, about it for the last few years playing in the tournament up here, watched the Crenshaw crew you know, work on it for years. So I was excited to see it and get to play it. And uh, Johnny always does a great job and hospitality up here is great. So I'm excited to be here. Davis, um, as well, just wanted to get your thoughts, sir. It, it's good to have you back here in Ozark Mountain Country. You talked about witnessing the development, and of course, Corey and Crenshaw really putting their architectural expertise to this. Being back here in the Ozark, sir, what's that like for you? Well, I love coming up here. We've had a great time. Um, even the year that it rained every day, Scott Verplank and Steve Stricker and I stayed together, and we had a great time just being up here. It's just um, a different kind of country, especially from somebody from the southeast. But um, the golf course is just great. I, I, I talked to the Crenshaw crew while they were building it, came out here and walked around a few holes when it was rock, and then it had some dirt, and then when it had some grass, I followed a group of turkeys around a couple holes and watched them while they were building it. And um, just been excited to see it open. You know, I told Tiger the same thing about his course. I've watched it for years being built. You know, it takes so long here because of the terrain. But um, the routing that Ben and Bill put on this golf course and obviously with Johnny's vision, it's just incredible. Every hole is beautiful and um, I love the style of architecture. And I texted Ben after about 10 or 11 holes. I said, it's in my top 10 already and I'm not even finished yet. So um, I love it. I, th I think it's great. We're lucky to be playing here. Davis, if I can also ask you as well too, I mean, 2020 has just changed so much. COVID-19 obviously has had a major effect on sports in general as a whole. Being out here and playing on these courses and playing on the Champions Tour, not having fans present, do you consider that a, a benefit to you personally? And, and what is that like for you? Does that take some of the pressure off or do you really miss those fans? Well, not having the fans is definitely no benefit. I mean, it's more fun to play, more fun to make birdies and, and hear cheers. Um, but as somebody who runs a PGA Tour event, um, it's not good for business, you know. Um, that's where our charity dollars come from, or from pro-ams, and, and obviously from, from fans coming out and watching. Um, the whole tour is built on giving back to charity, and if we can't give back to charity, then it's disappointing not to have the fans excited to watch. Um, you know, we literally have seen them outside the, f the fence, watching through the fence or from the backyards or from a distance. Um, you know, I was in the grocery store last night, and people are recognizing me and knowing that the tournament's here, but they can't come. So that's, it's disappointing. But um, the tour, which is, you know, the commissioners of the regular tour, the champions tour, are doing an unbelievable job for us to be actually playing golf. You know, to, to play, I played the PGA in San Francisco, to be able to go there, to be able to go to Detroit, to be able to go to Flint, Michigan, and all these places we've been where COVID is so bad. Uh, and to pull it off is amazing. So. The fans at home are getting to watch and um, we're still doing what we can for charity and we're still continuing on and showing people that, hey, we can come out and play and travel and stay healthy. And I think that's a big statement. Playing today, did you, uh, how do you feel like the wind will affect you over the next few days? Obviously being up here on the top, it's getting a little breezy, can't it? I've played up here, yeah, in, uh, on the Gary Player course where it was just howling and uh, <laughs> on a short course, you couldn't even get the ball to do what you <laughs> wanted it to do. So. I have loved to see the forecast. It keeps saying light and variable. Um, caddies hate light and variable, but um, we like light. Um, caddies like to know which way it's going. But um, no, I've, as long as it doesn't blow too hard, you know, J Ben's course is generous off the tee. Um, and because of the terrain here, the greens are very large. Um, he explained to me uh, the way he did Kapalua that we enjoyed for so many years on the tour. Um, such big views and big scenes downhills that you can't have small greens so the greens are big enough where if it does blow um, you'll be able to get the ball in the fairway on the green you're gonna have to any any golf course you have to putt well to, to win so you're gonna have to putt well and um, and obviously proximity to the hole is gonna be important on big greens but 
Um, weatherman's being nice so far. He's not <laughs> predicting big one. Obviously, the big news this week is Phil's debut. Can you just talk a little bit about what he brings to our tour being out here? Well, anywhere Phil or any of the big guys go is exciting. It's great to see him out. Um, I have not been out enough, so hopefully um, I'll be out and competing again with Phil. You know, I've, I've run up against him for a long, long time since he was a little kid on tour. So um, now he's a little kid again. So we're we're have to fight him off. And you know, we saw it last week. So many guys playing so well. Um, I know Jim Furyk came out and won his first week, but his reaction was, "Man, it's hard to win out there." <laughs> and um, it's going to be tougher with Phil now. So excited to have him. Davis, what do you think about the tour overall? Because Ernie joined this year, as did uh, Furyk and some of these other people. I mean, this tour it just seems to be getting better every year with these players uh, making the commitment to play. This is a, an unbelievable crop. I said that when I walked out on the range today. Like, holy cow, this is a great field. There's a lot of new guys, and um, it's a big year. Obviously, guys like me and Furyk and Stricker are trying to figure out which tour we should play and, and what our schedule is. But um, I think... It's been a long time since we've seen this kind of a, a influx of new big names, and um, it's exciting to play out here. Hopefully, the fans can come see it soon. Davis, as well, early on in the year, obviously some big news headlines for you on a, on a personal note. Just wanted to check up with you. Obviously, we're here at the end of summer. How are you and Robin both doing? Obviously, with the fire at your home, just so, so incredibly thankful that you both are safe. How are things settling for you as far as your, your house? Uh, it's still hard, you know, um, until you go through something like that. I've had two close personal friends go through it. And then remember way back, Raymond Floyd and um, Steve, uh, Steve uh, Lowry, um, other guys on our tour that have gone through it. It's like nothing uh, you can ever imagine. And coming here and seeing a bunch of guys that I haven't seen in a long time, you know, it brings it right back up. I hate leaving my wife at home, but she's got three little granddaughters to entertain her, so <laughs> we're very blessed in our life. We've had a lot of tragedies in our lives um, over the last 20 years, but we've also had a lot of blessings, and uh, we're moving forward. And, you know, I'm out here doing what I love doing, playing golf, and um, can't get much better than that. You know, and you, you also had that opportunity, a, a really big decision for you, and I imagine it was a very tough decision as well to move uh, from the CBS commentary, talking the game and talking about golf, and really kind of reshifting things for yourself and being able to focus back on the game. Can you tell us a little bit about that decision? What is a big one to make and, and obviously refocusing on the game? Yeah, it was a big one to go try it. Um, it was a big one to say <laughs> that I wasn't very good at it and um, I was getting frustrated. But as you said earlier, this is a crazy year. Yeah. You know, we've had um, so many things happen this year. I've had so many things happen personally. Uh, it was just it was just tough. Um, to break into something new and CBS and I both agreed that it, it just wasn't working for me this year and we didn't say it's a closed door but um, I needed to get some stability normalcy back in my life my wife is pushing me to go play golf that's what you do um, you'll be happy playing golf and I'll be happy with you out of my hair so uh, I think for all of us um, you know I hope it was the right decision for CBS I know it was right for me um, they have, I've been part of the CBS family for 30 years. They've been great to me. And um, our, our trial and then me deciding not to do it all went like family. So hopefully uh, I can continue to support them and get on their air some. David, just curious, um, you talked to Phil, you talked to Bernhard, and you've obviously gone through your debut out here. What do you sense that, like, what will be some of the, the challenges that you'll be Phil kind of goes through figuring out, you know, a new golf course, three rounds, new guys, like kind of all that. Yeah, a new golf course, I think, is, is for a lot of us this week. But for Phil, it's just everything's new. Um, <laughs> so I'm riding in the cart coming over the hill. I'm like, oh, you know, it's been getting used to the practice rounds and the way things go out here. But um, what Jim Furyk said is, hey, it's a, it's a shootout. These guys make tons of birdies. And I said it when I turned 50, if I putt well enough to win out here, I can win on the regular tour. That's the same thing with Phil. If Phil putts well enough to win a golf tournament out here, he would still be competitive on the regular tour because you have to make a lot of putts to win. Obviously, it's three days. You feel like if you make a couple of pars, you're getting behind. But it's still, you have to shoot you know, four, five, six under par every day to, to keep pace on most courses. And um, Phil's going to find out that he's going to have to putt really well to win out here. He's not just going to come out here and be the long hitter and, and all of a sudden win.
about the same spot. 